walking, running, throwing, striking, moving furniture, grappling, swimming. What do all these things have in common? Rotation. And yet, what is something that we rarely ever do in the gym or during our training? Hang on. Rotate. That should be reason enough, in my opinion. That should be argument enough to get you guys to rotate more in the gym. We move in this plane of motion all the time. We need to be powerful, strong, and safe doing so. And so it's nuts to me that it's something that we don't train. I have a perfect exercise for you guys, the cross-body kettlebell swing. That's fantastic for training your rotational strength, your strength and movement in the transverse plane. We'll get to that in a moment, but first I'd like to quickly address why it is that so few people are moving in the rotational plane in their training to begin with. And there's a few reasons for this. The first, of course, is simply a lack of awareness. This is something that a lot of people simply don't realize that they need to do, and many coaches aren't gonna tell them to rotate either. Most of our favorite exercises that we default to, the bench press, the curl, the squat, the lunge, they don't involve rotation. They're all in the sagittal plane. At the same time, in order to move in the rotational plane, you need usually some kind of specialist equipment. That means a cable pulley, that means bands, or it means a kettlebell, as we're gonna see in a moment. On top of this though, those that are in the know, some of them will tell you you don't need to train in the rotational plane. They'll say that when you train in the sagittal plane, you're strengthening those same muscles, even if you aren't moving in those ways. Well, first of all, you're not strengthening them much. I mean, you strengthen your legs when you do a standing bicep curl because they are stabilizing muscles. You strengthen your core when you do a standing bicep curl but I wouldn't call that enough to train your legs and your core. I think most people would agree with me. It's the same thing if you're doing a squat and expecting to train your obliques or your rhomboids or anything like that. They just aren't getting enough dedicated attention. At the same time, we also need to be building these movement patterns. We need to train ourselves to move the correct muscles in the correct way to generate maximum power. You may have heard people say that bodybuilders can't fight despite all the apparent strength and muscle they have. This holds some truth, and the same goes for powerlifters and the most strength athletes. But it's not because of that sport. It's not because they've built muscle, bulky muscle, as many people seem to think. It's because they're not training themselves to use it properly. They're not training themselves in the transverse plane. They're not learning to develop power in the feet and hips and throw it into a punch. It's not only about building strength to match in those muscles that are responsible for rotating the body. It's about learning that movement pattern. Someone told me in the comments that the big three lifts from powerlifting take care of all the big kinetic chain patterns. But I massively disagree with this because how is rotation, how is the serape effect not a big kinetic chain pattern? Migrating somewhere a bit drier, I think. Finally, some people say they want to avoid things like rotational kettlebell swings because they think it's going to damage their spine. They say that you shouldn't put this spine in a rotated, twisted position and apply torque because it's weak in that position and you can injure yourself. But that's exactly the point. Because it's weak in that position and you can injure yourself, that's why we need to strengthen it. This is knees over toes all over again. If your knees are weak when they go past your toes, you don't just avoid ever training that position because in real life, your knees do go past your toes. As Ben Patrick will point out when you go down the stairs, same thing goes for rotation. I've pointed out you rotate when you walk, when you run, when you throw, when you throw a punch, when you grapple, when you swim, when you move furniture. You're gonna do one of those things, probably the moving furniture, and if you haven't trained at all in this range of motion, chances are you're gonna hurt yourself. So we wanna strengthen ourselves in this movement pattern with a gentle and correct movement, learning to move properly, just like we do with a deadlift or something, building up strength and stability, stabilizing muscles, and then we can use this power and strength to avoid injury when we go out into the real world. So that's why you need rotational movements. It's why the cross body kettlebell swing is one of my favorite exercises. And we'll see why this one specifically is fantastic for this in a moment. And it's why it's something I program for literally everybody. So let's take a look. But just as it's important to protect your spine by using functional exercises, it's also important to protect your skin with today's sponsor, Tiege Hanley. Not sure whether I should be proud or ashamed of that segue. Tiege Hanley is a men's skincare brand that simplifies the process of looking after your skin. They do this by providing you with all the products you need and none that you don't. I recommend that you start with their level one system, which comes with all of the basics. That's a daily face wash, an exfoliating scrub, an AM moisturizer with SPF 20, and a PM moisturizer. 
Oh, and to make it really simple, they also include an instruction card that basically tells you when and how much and how to apply every single one of these products. This really appealed to me as someone who is interested in looking after their skin, especially as I'm getting a little bit older, but who really doesn't want to spend a whole lot of time researching all this stuff. And I genuinely think that my skincare has made a difference to the way I look. So smooth. Do you need to shave though? But don't take just my word for it, because they have over 7,000 positive customer reviews. In addition to amazing skin, members of Tiege Hanley get tons of benefits, including at least 20% off the retail price, access to exclusive monthly deals, the ability to pause or cancel at any time, and free US shipping. And because Tiege Hanley is sponsoring today's video, they're offering my viewers an amazing deal. Just click the link in the description and you'll get 30% off your first box, plus a free gift. Don't miss out on this amazing deal, click that link and get started today. So to perform this movement, here's what you're going to do. You're going to get your kettlebell, stand with it hanging nicely in the middle, have a slight bend in your knees, not major, but you want soft knees. And then what you're going to do is you're going to swing from one side to the other. You're going to do that by starting in that position. And then I'm going to produce power from my shoulders and my lats. And the thing to be aware of is that as my body is crossing over, I'm also rotating at the hips, and this is key. Trying to keep the knees in line with the toes, so the whole leg twists. So yeah, as I'm swinging across my body, I start producing the movement from my lats and from my shoulders, and then my torso rotates and joins in, producing power. But then what's gonna happen is my hips are gonna twist, so I'm gonna move like this, this is important because it allows me to keep my lumbar spine, my lower back, nice and rigid and straight because the upper torso, the thoracic spine, is designed to rotate and should be able to generate power that way. You want some nice mobility in that area to move in a powerful and functional way. But the lumbar spine, the lower back, isn't designed to rotate so much. So that's where an injury can happen. What we want to learn to do is to keep that relatively locked in place. Now, of course, a little bit of rotation is normal, if your body can do something, chances are it should be able to do it. But you don't want to be twisting here like so. You want to be bringing your whole lower torso round because that's also going to be what allows you to produce power from the floor into a fist, into a throw, into anything else. If you move like this, you lose all of that power and that energy. What I like about this movement in particular is firstly, like I say, the fact that we're rotating at the hips as well as the core, which I think is a really key feature. At the same time though, I like it because of the direction, the angle of resistance. So when you perform an atlas swing, for example, you're swinging it up actually like this, which might be good for a golfer and it also involves rotating at the hips. But if you're throwing a punch, a ball, a piece of furniture, if you're wrestling, then you're usually going to be trying to rotate across. The angle of resistance is coming from behind you. And this is why I really like the cross body kettlebell swing, because although the angle of resistance is still going down in many ways because, you know, gravity, you're still trying to move it in this horizontal fashion across your body. And of course, once the momentum carries the weight and twists with your body, then the resistance actually is coming in that direction and pulling you backwards behind you because it's followed that arc through the air. And another really great thing about it is the deceleration phase because it includes anti-rotation. So as the weight moves, you want to dampen that momentum in order to prevent it applying too much rotational force to your spine and so that you can then deliver power back the other way. And that means that you're using your muscles to brace and to slow down the movement, using them very much in a form of stabilization, much like you do with something like a one-armed push-up. That's a form of anti-rotation. Fight against this momentum that's trying to twist your body and then you're delivering it back the other way. It's like you're battling against the kettlebell. So this is another great way to prevent injury because you're learning to absorb impact and deliver it straight back. Of course, there's also all kinds of other bracing going on because you don't want the weight to pull you forwards and over. You also don't want to lean back too far and fall over. So yeah, there's all kinds of core stabilization going on here in a very dynamic manner, teaching you to keep your body stable and to maintain balance under all these unpredictable forces. Kel ain't looking so good. By the way, guys, don't worry too much about the naming conventions here. The term crossbody kettlebell swing can be used for a whole bunch of different exercises, including the kettlebell swing where you just go to one side, including the atlas swing. Some people probably call this something different. There's no like universal agreed name, so don't worry too much about that. 
When it comes to performing an exercise, what's more important than the specific technique is the biomechanics and making sure you're safe. What's important here, for example, is not allowing too much torque to be applied to the lumbar spine, the lower back. My point is, learn the principles, but don't get too wed to one school or one idea. Experiment, learn from different teachers, and yeah, don't be a keyboard warrior. I think we ate all the rolls, so that's about it. They're slimy. Um, do with that as you will. Now, of course, it goes without saying that you need to use a light weight to begin with, and you can even just practice the movement without a weight to start with, just to make sure you've got the movement pattern down correctly before you then add on weight. So I hope you found this video useful and interesting, guys. I actually made it because you requested that I did. I made my video on my top 10 exercises and quite a few of you requested that I make a highlight on this exercise, so here it is. I hope you found it useful and interesting. Let me know if you use it in the comments down below or what other rotational exercises you use. Likewise, if there's more exercises you'd like me to do a highlight and a breakdown on like this one, then let me know and I'll hopefully get round to it. If you want a training program that includes this movement and a whole bunch of others that often go overlooked to develop every aspect of your performance, then I have a program for that. It's called Super Functional Training 2.0, the Protein Performance System. There's a link to it in the description down below. It comes with over two hours of instructional footage and an 80 plus page ebook. Either way, guys, thank you so much for watching this one, and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.